Hello, it's Gem Games here, and in this video we're going to start with the interaction system. So in this video we are going to create this test actor and this dot to the screen. And when we are facing to the interactable actor that has the interactable a blueprint interface set, then we will show this little circle. And when we go off, it will fade away. So yeah, let's get started. First, I have just created this empty first-person template and I want to go to the first-person folder and to the blueprints and let's just delete the BB weapon component, BB pickup rifle, BB first-person projectile. Let's delete all of those. And also, I actually have to go to the first-person arms, animations, first-person anim blueprint and here on the event craft when we can go there. Yeah, here at the bottom, we have this as rifle and all this. Let's delete all that. Let's compile, save, let's close. Let's go back to the blueprints folder and let's open the BB first person character. Now here we can delete this B has rifle. We don't need that anymore. So now what we want to do, we want to create a function Let's call it interaction trace. Okay, let's open it. And what we want to do here, first we want to add a sequence, so S and left click, because we want to add something here later on. And from the 10, 0, what we want to do is we want to line trace by channel like this and now we want to get our first person camera and we want to get world location from it and that will be our start of the trace let's add a reroute here so it looks better let's Align this with the queue. Let's move this a little bit further. Now we also want to get from the first person camera, we want to get the get forward vector. So we will get the basically the our facing direction. Now from here we want to multiply this. And we want to change the spin to float single precision. And let's promote this to a variable. Let's call this variable. interaction range this will be the like the distance that we can interact from so let's compile and change the default value to like i think we want to make it yeah let's make it 250 okay after that what we want to do we want to get from the world location we want to add to it and we want to add this forward vector multiplied by the interaction trace like this now let's select this, let's press Q to align, also this, Q to align, let's connect this to the end. So now our, our trace will go 250 units, so this amount uh, from forward from the first person camera. Okay, and here, what we have to do, we don't actually have to do anything, so let's continue. Now out hit, we want to break this, break hit results, let's open this. And now we want to get the hit actor and we want to promote it to a variable. Like this. Let's get from here. Let's call this interaction hit actor reference ref with one f. Like that. Now let's add a category, let's call it interaction. Let's also add this interaction range to that category. And my phone is ringing, so one second. Okay, so what we want to do next, we want to get from this and we want to check if does implement interface. Now we have to create the interface, so let's compile, save, let's move this next to the first person map, like this. Now let's go to the, actually we are on the blueprints, 
So here, what we want to do, we want to create a new folder. Let's call it interfaces. And let's change this color to some shade of blue because it's blueprint interfaces like this. And also, let's change this blueprints folder to that color like that. Now let's open the interfaces and let's create new uh, blueprint interface under the blueprints blueprint interface. Let's call this interact double like this. Let's open it. And we want to call this first function can in oh it doesn't work for some reason. Can interact like that. Here let's add a output. Let's call it result and it can be boolean or it has to be boolean. Now let's create another function. Let's call it interact and we don't have to do anything else here. Let's compile, save and we can close this. Now that we have created this, we want to check if this interaction hit actor does implement interface interactable. So the one that we just created. Now let's add a branch, B and left click. Let's connect it to here. Uh, what we want to do next from the uh, true, we want to get the interaction hit actor ref. And then we want to get the can interact message under interactable. This will be always, you can always find this because this is a function on a blueprint interface. It can be always find like this. So let's call it from the true. And now we want to promote this result to a variable. And let's call it can, oh, I cannot write, can interact. And let's uh, add it to the category interaction, like that. And here on the false, we want to set it to false, like that. OK, let's compile. Let's save. So next thing, we want to go to the event graph. And we want to actually, let's move this event begin play a little bit further up so we can get some space here in between. And now let's right click and search for a event tick. Let's move it to here. Actually, maybe here. And we want to call this interaction trace like that. Let's compile. Let's save. Next thing, what we want to do is we want to go to the link in the description that takes us to my Google Drive. You want to download the circle.png. And after you have done that, what we want to do is we want to go to the blueprints. Let's create a new folder. Let's call it resources. Let's open it and let's import the circle like this. Okay. We actually cannot see it here because it is red, uh, white and the background is white for some reason. But yeah, it will work. Now let's go back to the blueprints. Let's create another folder. Let's call it HUD and let's change the color to something else. I will make it like some shade of white. Let's open it. Let's right click user interface widget blueprint. Let's create one of those user widget. Let's call this player HUD or something like that. Let's open it. Here, what we want to do, we want to add a canvas panel so we can actually add things. Then what we want to do is we want to add an image. Let's move it here. Let's anchor it to the middle. Let's set the position uh, X to zero, position Y to zero. And size, I want to set it to 36 by 36 because the pro under here under brush, let's open it. Let's change the image to the circle. Here you can see it is 72 by 72. So this is half of the size. You can always set it to whatever you want, but yeah. Uh, 
uh, 10 alignment let's make 0.5 x 0.5 y so it's always in the middle of the screen now what we want to do next is we want to scroll down here to the render opacity we want to set it to zero so it's not visible on the game start let's compile save let's actually rename this image to interact dot or crosshair or whatever let's make it variable so it's is variable is true now let's add a animation an animation sorry about that. let's call this show dot anim let's open it let's add a interaction dot track if you can see this you want to select this first so it will add it like this and here we want to add render opacity let's set it to zero on zero and point 25 let's set it to one okay so it will basically just make the dot come to the screen smoothly now let's duplicate this animation. Let's call it uh, hide dot anim. Let's double click it. Now let's go to the zero mark. Let's set it to one, and to the point twenty five. Let's set it to zero, so it will hide it like this. Now let's compile, save, and let's go to the graph. Here on the graph, we want to delete all these events let's create a another custom event let's call this show hide oh show hide dot something like that now let's add a input let's call this show so if we want to show it or not let's add a branch so we can separate separate the code to here let's select and press q to align now what we want to do we want to add a sequence by pressing s and left click also sequence to the false actually it is not aligned correctly i don't like this oh okay s and left click here also and now we want to get from the 10 zero we want to get a do once like this then we want to copy this node here from 10 0 like this then from 10 1 we want to reset this one and from here from the false 10 1 we want to reset this one because now we can only do this action after we have done this and after that we can do this and this and this you know so we cannot do it multiple times we have to always call the other function or like the other from true after that we have to call the false uh, we can call true like multiple times in row you know and we want to start closed here on the false okay because now we want to open the animations from here and we want to get the show dot anim and we want to play animation from completed now we want to get the hide dot anim and we actually have to move this a little bit further down like this and then we want to play this anim. I will explain you soon what this does or how this works. So, actually, let's align this first. You might have it aligned already, but yeah. So, first, when we show it, we call the true. We will do once and play show.animation. Okay, and when we hide it, we will play the hide animation and also after that we will reset the show animation but this will be uh, like you cannot do this before this has happened again and this uh, we set this this to set closed uh, sorry start closed because if we don't do that on the when the game starts it will play this hide animation and we don't want that so compile save and let's go back to the pp first person character here on the interaction trace here on the start where we added this sequence what we want to do is actually sorry we have to go to the event craft first and to the here on the event picking play let's actually delete this background i don't like that after that we want to create that widget so create widget 
let's select our widget that we just created, so the player HUD. And from the written value, we want to promote it to a variable so we can add, uh, adjust the values later. Let's call this HUD ref, like this. And from here, we want to add to viewport so we can actually see it on the screen. Yep, let's compile, save. And now let's go to the interaction trace. Here on the 10 1, what we want to do, we want to get the HUD ref. And we want to show hide dot. And we want to get from the 10 1. And now we want to show or hide it by this can interact variable, like this. Because here we are setting it true if we can interact with the actor. And if we can't, we set it to false. And also, if it doesn't implement the interface, we will set it to false. So this will work pretty nicely. Now, when we compile, save and go to the first person map. What we want to do next, we want to go to the blueprints and we want to create yet another folder. Let's call it interactables. Did I write it correctly? Interactables. Yeah, I think. Let's open it. Let's create a new blueprint class actor let's call this test actor let's open it and here on the viewport let's add a cube and let's actually move it to 50 units on this set so it's on the basically on the surface now let's change this uh, material to first person projectile material so it doesn't look so boring you know that doesn't actually do anything but yeah now on the class the uh, defaults we want to, oh, uh, I think it's the class settings. Yeah, here, inherited interfaces. We want to add that interactable, like this. Now we can see new, these new functions come here. Let's open the can interact by double clicking. And here, now we can set it interactable here, or we can promote it to a variable, which is a much better way. Uh, let's call this can interact but we cannot call it that because the uh, function is already called that so let's add a space or question mark or whatever now let's make it instance editable and expose on spawn now let's compile save let's go to the level and let's move this actor to this level maybe to here now let's see what happens so let's play a new editor window when we call close to this we should see the dot and we don't see it. And that's because we didn't set this uh, as interactable. Let's make it interactable by setting this to true. Now let's play. And it will work. As you can see, now that, that means that we can interact. But we ha do, haven't created the functionality yet. But yeah, now it will fade away. It will come to the screen, fade away, and so on. So yeah. On the next episode, we will actually create the functionality so we can interact with the object. But yeah, I actually think that was all for this video. If you liked what you saw, please click the like button and subscribe for more. Yeah, hope you have a great day and see you on the next one. Bye.